Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Well, good morning. You can be seated. And uh, let's say good morning to our online family. Good morning, good morning online. Good morning, online family. Hallelujah. We're glad you're joined in. As I said, we had, uh, you know, on Christmas Eve, we had a couple of, well, all the, uh, the whole service was wonderful, I thought. And uh, but Amanda did the song uh, Winter Snow, yeah. and uh, it's just a shame that that can only be done once a year. So we're not going to do it just once a year. I've asked Amanda to sing yeah. Winter Snow again for us, and Amen. online family, you're going to get to enjoy that as Amen. well. So Amen. praise God. Amen. 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 Super kids this morning. Amen. Okay. And let's pray over the word. Father, we thank you for your word today. Lord, I thank you that your word is alive and it's yes. full of power. Yes. And I thank you, Lord, that, that from the moment of creation, 
When you first said, let there be light. Lord, I thank you that your word is just as valid, just as alive, just as powerful from that very first moment that it was spoken. And it always will be throughout all eternity. Because heaven and earth may pass away, but your word will never pass away. And we thank you that we can build our lives on your word, that we can receive your word into our hearts, that we can believe it, that we can act upon it, and that we can receive into our lives all that your word promises. Yeah, amen. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. I want to talk about the title of my message today is Faith to be Healed. Amen. Faith, could anybody use healing? Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Well, if you, if you can't use any right now, just go ahead and store this yeah. up because you're going you're gonna to need it. Amen. 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 This is one of the areas that we constantly, uh, the enemy tries to attack folks in, is our physical health. Amen. Oh, yeah. Praise God. And, you know, the whole world has been affected by uh, the coronavirus. You know, folks are shutting down and, you know, staying home and, and all of that. And, and uh, you know, uh, God wants us well. Amen. Amen. Praise God. He wants right. us healthy and whole. That's and he's right. made provision for that. Yes. Right. And your faith can make you whole. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can have faith to be healed. Amen. 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 Thank God for medicine. Thank God for nutrition. Thank God for all those things. But there's a divine side to healing. Yes, yes. there is. And we ought to be strong on that. Yes, amen. And we ought to embrace that. Amen. 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 Glory to God. So we're going to look at two accounts in the Bible and, uh, and, and, and discover some principles here. The first one is found in Acts chapter 14 and verse number 8. In Acts 14 and verse 8, it says, And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul, observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Now, the other, the other account is Mark chapter 5. Look at that with me. We're going to come back to Acts 14. We're going to look at both these in detail. But Mark 5, verse 25. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment for she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you. And you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Amen. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Amen. Praise God. So again, we're going to look closely at both these accounts of healing here in the Scripture. First of all, I want to let you know something. I want to tell you why they're recorded in the Bible. Why are they written down here? Not only these accounts, but all the other stories. All the other, when I say stories, I'm talking about true accounts. I'm not talking about something made up. Amen. Right. Amen. Why, are they, why are they given to us? Well, Paul, <laughs> in 1 Corinthians 10, Paul says, these are written down for our examples. Yes. Amen. They're written down for our examples. Number one, to inspire us. Yeah. Number one, to inspire us. They give us hope that God will do the same for us. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. 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 Yes. And then number two, this is where a lot of people miss it, though. Number two, to instruct us. Yeah. That's right. They give us principles that we can follow. Yeah. Amen. What they did and how they received their healing, we can do, and we can receive healing the same way. Amen. 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 Right. Jesus said to the woman with the issue of blood, Daughter, your faith has made you well. And it said of the man at Lystra, he had faith to be healed. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. So let's look at that. Let's look back at the lame man at Lystra. Now Paul uh, and his team, they're preaching the gospel for the first time in this area. They come to this region, uh, and, and Lystra is one of the cities in this region that they're preaching the gospel at. And verse 7 of Acts 14 says they were preaching the gospel there. They were preaching the gospel at Lystra. Yes. And here's this man. The Bible says he, he was without strength in his feet. He was a cripple, and he had never walked. You ever felt like you, you were without strength? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. And this man was without strength yeah. in his feet. He was crippled. He was lame from birth. He had never walked, all right? And uh, the Bible says in verse 9, let's look back at verse, at verse 9. It says, this man heard Paul speaking. Well, what was Paul speaking? The gospel. Yeah. The gospel. What was he speaking? Yeah. Verse 7, we just read it, it says they were preaching the gospel yeah. there. Yeah. They were preaching the gospel there. So when this man heard Paul speaking, what was he hearing? The gospel. Yes, Goodness. he was hearing the gospel. Man. He was hearing the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news about Jesus Christ. Man. Now, well, a lot of times we think of the gospel being only in terms of forgiveness of sin and the salvation of our spirit. And it's true that that is a central part of it, but the gospel also includes healing. Amen. Yep. We used to, the term is not, used, is not so widely uh, used anymore, but it's still true. Uh, we used to call ourselves a full gospel church. Now, we still are. Whether we use that term or not, well, we'll just, we'll, I'll just say we're going to use that term. We are a full gospel church. What does that mean? It means we believe the full, full gospel. gospel. Yeah. You know, there was an organization started years ago, back yeah. in the 1940s, late or early 1950s, as, a, as an offshoot of the, of the healing revival called the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship. Right. And the Lord used that organization to to bring a, a charismatic renewal to the world. That was that was the, one of the main organizations that God used in what we know as the charismatic revival yeah. and renewal in the 50s and really that took took off in the 60s. But the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship started by Demas Shikari. Well, they called it Full Gospel because they believed the Full Gospel, not only salvation and forgiveness of sin, but also the baptism in the Holy Spirit, Amen. also divine healing. Hallelujah. Also, God's abundance and prosperity. Amen. 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 That's the full gospel. Yes, Paul was preaching the full gospel. Praise God. Amen. Amen. In fact, he said that in Romans. He said, I fully preach the gospel of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we ought to fully preach it as well. Amen. We ought not to halfway preach it. That's right. We ought not to partway preach it. That's right. We ought not to water down preach it. Amen. We ought to fully preach it, amen? amen. So I intend to fully preach the gospel, amen? Yeah, amen. And I hope you'll do the same. Amen. Praise God, because we can all present amen. the good news, amen. amen? They were preaching the gospel there. Let's, put, let's get verse 9 back up there. They were preaching the gospel, and the man heard Paul speaking. Paul was preaching the gospel, and it says, Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. Now this is just, I, I, I hope when we get to heaven... I'm sure that message is archived and we'll be able to download it and, and listen to it and perhaps even watch it unfold yeah. just as it happened that day. Right. I would love to hear that message okay. that Paul preached. This is the first time that this man has ever heard about Jesus and one message, one message here in the gospel, he's got faith to be yeah. healed. He's a cripple. He's never walked. He's, 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 he's been lame from birth. He's never walked. He's a grown man now, years and years in this condition, but all of a sudden he's got faith to be healed Amen. from hearing the gospel. Amen. Woo. What are we preaching? <laughs> well, we ought to be preaching, we ought to be preaching the same thing. Yeah, yeah. We ought to be preaching a message so powerful and so positive and so life giving that in one message a person can have faith to be healed, even a person in a hopeless situation like that. Oh, praise God. I, I don't know about y'all, but I fall short. Now. Amen? But no more. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. He heard, they heard Paul, the man heard Paul speak, and, uh, and he had faith to be healed. So principle number one, write this down. 
Principle number one today, faith will work for whosoever. Yes. Faith will work for whosoever. These people, this man in Lystra, this woman with the issue of blood, they're ordinary people. Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. We never even learned their names. Uh -uh. We never even know what their names are. Yet they had faith to be healed, yet their faith made them whole. Amen. The, 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 the man at Lystra heard the gospel one time. Yeah. The woman with the issue of blood heard one report right. about Jesus. You know, your faith, if their faith can make them whole, then your faith can make you yes, whole. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Amen. This will work. Faith will work for whosoever. Yes, it amen. Will. Yes, Jesus it will. said, whoever, in Mark 11, 23, yep. whoever yep. says to the mountain, whoever yep. says to the mountain. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And principle number two, even though you've suffered long, with seemingly no results, your faith can make you well. Amen. Even though you have suffered That's right. long, That's right. with seemingly no results, your faith can make you well. That's right. Praise God. The woman with the issue of blood, the Bible says she had suffered 12 years. Yep. She had spent all of her money on the doctors, and she was not getting any better. She was getting worse. So for 12 years, this was going on. The man in Lister was lame from birth. He's never walked. The, both those situations seemed very hopeless, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Even though you may have suffered long, even though, even though it may seem uh, hopeless, even though seemingly you've gotten no results, your faith can make you well. In fact, won't you say that? Say, my faith, my faith can, make can make me well. Say this, say, I have faith to be healed. I have faith to be healed. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Believe that. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. All right. Principle number three. We're moving along today. Amen. <laughs> We're already on point number three. Principle number three. You have to hear in order to have faith. Yeah. You have to hear in order to have faith. The man at Lystra, it says they were preaching the gospel there, and this man, put verse 9 back up there again. <clears throat> Thank you, Grace. This man heard Paul speaking. Yep. He heard Paul speaking. And it's amazing the similarities between these two accounts in Scripture, the principles that we see uh, revealed in both of them. All right? Uh, so this man heard Paul speak, and so we have to... We have to hear in order to have faith. So what was Paul speaking? He was speaking the gospel, yes. speaking the word of God, right? Yeah. Amen. And let me, let me say it to you this way, and I would, I would encourage you to write this down. When you hear a true report concerning the will of God, that's what the word of God is, isn't it? Yes, amen. The word of God is a true report concerning the will of God. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen. The Word of God is a true report concerning the will of God. The problem is a lot of people have heard false reports. Fake news is not something that, a phenomenon that began with the Trump administration in 2016. No. No. I, got, fake news has been going on a long time ago. And if, and if President Trump is frustrated about the media reporting fake news on him, how do you think God feels about preachers and churches and all kinds of people yes. reporting yes. fake news on him for right. generations. Right. 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 Amen. Amen. <laughs> no, the Bible is the will of God, reveals the will of God. So when you hear a true report concerning God's will and you accept it, faith will come. Amen. Romans 10, 17 says this. It says, so then faith comes. By hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Yeah, amen. 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 When you hear a true report concerning the will of God, that's what the Word of God is. When you hear that and you accept it, faith will come. Yes. Just like that man at Lystra, when he heard Paul speaking, he was soaking it up. Instead of, instead of saying, oh, I don't believe that. I don't know who this guy is. When Paul was preaching and speaking, and he was, he was drinking it in. He was soaking it up. That's right. Hallelujah. I like, again, I've shared the, the uh, testimony of, of Beckett Cook. He was uh, uh, living a homosexual lifestyle for years and years and was out in, living out in Los Angeles, California and was a uh, very 
uh, well connected. He knew all the Hollywood people and all the all the beautiful people in Hollywood. He was a he was a set designer for fashion photography. Uh, but but one day he got invited to church, and uh, he went to this church called Reality LA was the name of the church. I like the name of that church. And he decided to go. He just the, the Holy Spirit was pulling him and drawing. He had family members praying for him. And he went there and he said, as he sat there and as the, as the pastor preached, he said, something within him was resonating. Everything that he's saying here, this is true. This is true. This is real. This is true. It was resonating. See, if your heart is open, when you hear the truth, it will resonate oh, yeah. with you. Oh, yeah. This man knew he was hearing the truth. This yeah. man in Lystra, he knew he was hearing the truth. Yeah. He knew, he knew that, that this Jesus that Paul was preaching about could make him well, yes, could heal him, yeah. could change his life. Oh, amen? Yeah, yeah, amen. He, re he believed that he didn't have to stay in this condition That's anymore, right. even though he'd been that way since birth. Amen? That's right. He amen. believed what he was hearing. He received it. Amen? Yeah, amen. And faith came. Hallelujah. Faith came. Ooh. Hallelujah. Faith comes by hearing. Yeah. And hearing by the word of God. The Amen. woman with the issue of blood heard about Jesus, the Bible says. Amen. F.F. F. Bosworth, he was a great uh, minister of divine healing back in the 30s and 1930s and 1940s. And Bosworth had, had these great healing campaigns all over America. And he said this, he made this statement. He says, faith begins where the will of God is known. Amen. Faith begins where the will of God is known. It's known. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you know that it's God's will for you to be saved, you have faith to be saved. Yeah. If you know yeah. that it's God's will for you to be healed, right. you have faith to be healed. Right. Amen? Right. Amen. Faith begins Amen. where the will of God is known. Amen. Amen. Look at how Jesus ministered in Luke 5 and verse 15. It says, however, the report went around him, went around concerning him all the more. And great multitudes came together to what? To hear. To hear and to be healed. Everybody say, hear and be healed. Hear and be healed. Notice the connection between hearing and healing. They came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Jesus ministered this way. That's why the Bible says he went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing. Every sickness and every disease among the people. The teaching and the preaching came before the healing. Why? Because he knew for people to be healed, they had to have faith. And he knew that faith came by hearing. Right. So he taught and he preached. Amen? Amen? He went into his hometown. The Bible says he went into his hometown in, in, of Nazareth. And he said, it says that he could not do any mighty works there. Yeah. Right? right. Save that he laid his hands on a few sickly people and healed them. And it says that he marveled at their unbelief. But the next verse says that he went around about the villages teaching. Yes. So when he encountered that unbelief, he said, you know what? The cure for this unbelief is to teach. Yeah. That's right. Because faith will come when they hear. Amen? Well, amen. Praise God. Amen. In Mark 5, the woman with the issue of blood, verse 27, let's look at that. When she heard about Jesus... When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. The man in Lystra heard Paul speaking. He heard the gospel. The woman with the issue of blood heard a report about Jesus. She heard. And then the Bible says that she came and touched. For she said. Amen. For she said. Let's go back to 27 for a second, Grace. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment, for she said, in verse 28. So, what, so, the, so the order is this way. First of all, she heard, and then she said, and then she came and touched. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You see that? Even though the Bible yeah. reverses it, the Bible says she, she heard and she came, but then it says, for she said. For she said. Yeah. So we know the saying came before came before the action. Right. Amen. So point number four, principle number four is this. Your faith must be released by your words. Amen. Faith must be released by your words. What this woman said, that was her faith speaking. Yeah. When she heard about Jesus, faith came. 
And she said something. She began to say, when she heard about Jesus, what was she hearing? She was hearing how Jesus was healing the multitudes. Right. She was hearing how Jesus, how people were touching Jesus and being healed, obviously, because it came, it, it, it came into her thought process, and she began to think, and then she not only thought it, but she said it. It's important not just to think it, but say it, folks. Right. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 It's important to say it because faith is released by our words. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Faith is released by our words. Yes, it is. She said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Again, realizing God's no respect to our persons. Faith will work for whosoever. If so-and-so could be healed, if all these people could be healed, it'll work for me. Amen. Right. Lord, now remember, she's been this way 12 years. Yep. She's been sick for 12 years. She's gotten no better. She's only getting worse. The devil will try to keep her in a prison of hopelessness. Well, yeah, it might work for so-and-so, but it won't work for you. Look at you. You've been sick 12 years. No, glory to God. You have to rise above that. I said you have to rise above that. Amen. You have to break out of that prison of hopelessness and say, oh, well, it will never change. It will never get better. Right. Yes, it can change. Right. Amen. I said, yes, it can change. Amen. Yes, it can get better. Amen. 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 Yes, it can turn around. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory to God. So she said, if I touch his clothes, I'll be made well. Uh, so, so your faith, principle four, your faith must be released by your words. You know, a lot of times we undo, we undo our praying and our believing by our wrong speaking. Yep. Now listen to this. Many times we undo, we may be praying for healing, we may be believing for healing, but then if we speak contrary, it's not just with healing, it's in any area. We can undo our faith and undermine our faith by wrong speaking. Oh, yeah. And it's so easy. There's, wrong, there's negative voices all around us. Yes. There's folks speaking negatively all around you. There's negative reports all around you. And if you aren't careful, you can pick those up. Right. If you aren't careful, you can join in and lend your voice to that. What you've just done is you've negated your praying and your believing by your negative talking. Right. Right. Hello? Yeah, right. Amen? Yes. Right. Praise God. So guard, guard yourself against that. The psalmist said, put a watch over my lips. Yep. Yep. Put a watch over my lips. Amen. 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 Mark Hankins says it this way. Keep your speaker connected to your believer. Amen. Keep your speaker connected to your Amen. believer. Yep. A lot of times put people connect their speaker to their mind. Yep. That's right. But That's keep your speaker connected to your believer. The Bible right. says it's with the heart that we believe. Yeah. Amen. 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 Keep your speaker connected to your believer. Don't move that. Don't don't unplug that speaker and connect it to something else. Keep it connected. That's I right. know we have Bluetooth now, but keep it <laughs> keep it connected via Bluetooth. Amen. Keep your speaker connected to your believer. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. She said, "If I touch his clothes, I'll be made well." Well, Jesus, what Jesus said, Mark eleven twenty three, 23, he said, For assuredly, I say to you. King James says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee. <coughs> Amen. Now, that sounds poetic, as, as, what, as the King James does. But the truth is, uh, verily, he says, I'm telling you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Right. That's what verily, verily means. Yeah. That's what assuredly I say to you. Why did he have to preface... You know, it's like a used car salesman. i got to be honest with you. Well, were you not being honest with me? Like, well, then. <laughs> why did Jesus say, I'm telling you, the, why do you have to preface, I'm telling you the truth? Yeah. Well, did, well, did Jesus not always tell the truth? Of course he always told the truth. He had to preface it because what I'm about to tell you is so astounding, yes. so wonderful, so magnificent. Yes, it is. It's really true. It, it's not too good to be true. Right. That's right. Exactly. That's right. That's why he had to say it like that. That's why he had to preface it. Yeah. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes, look at this now, believes that those things he says will be done. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the things you say will be done? Amen. Right. Yes, I do. Amen. Amen. I do. Check up on what you're saying because you don't, some of that has been coming out your mouth. You don't think you want that to be done. <laughs> Hello? That's it. But believes that those things he says will be done 
He will have whatever he says. He will have whatever he says. So if you want to have something different in 2021, then you're going to have to say something different. Amen. Glory to God. All right. So he says you'll have. Jesus said you'll have whatever you say. Now notice this. Uh, Dad Hagen pointed this out because the Lord dealt with him, spoke to him directly about this as, as God called him. Kenneth E. Hagen. When I say Dad Hagen, I'm talking about Kenneth E. Hagen, uh, my spiritual mentor. Uh, I was privileged, blessed to be able to be uh, trained under him at Rama Bible Training Center. And uh, so where I received my training for ministry. And uh, in, the, in the 1940s, God called him to, to go and teach faith to the body of Christ. He said, go teach my people faith. He said, I've taught you faith through my word and by experience. Now go teach people what I've taught you. Go yeah. teach my people faith. Amen. And then the Lord said to him in Mark 11, 23, he said, did you notice? The Holy Spirit spoke to him. Put Mark 11, 23 back up there, Grace. He said, did you notice that say relative to the believer is in this verse three times yep. and believe say, is in the say, verse say. one time? Let's look at it. Amen. For surely I say to you, that doesn't count because that's Jesus saying. But whoever says, there's one time, yep. that's the believer, right? Yeah. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes. Okay, there's believe one time. That those things he says, they're saved a second time, will be done. He will have whatever he says. So, so say or says, say in some form, is in that verse three times and believe one time. Now the Lord talk, pointed this out to Dad Hagen. He said, you're going to have to do three times as much teaching on the saying part as the believing yeah. part. Amen. For to get people Amen. to get it. Amen. 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 So our saying is, is important. Yes, she Amen. said, if I touch his clothes, I shall be made well. She didn't say, I think I'm going to go try this. Mm -hmm. Amen. She said, I shall. Amen. That's right. I shall. She was Amen. definite about it. Amen. I shall. Amen. 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 Praise God. All right. 2 Corinthians 4.13. Says this, and since we have the same spirit of faith, yes. according to what is written, I believed, and therefore I spoke. Amen. We also believe, and therefore speak. speak. Amen. Yes. We ought to be speaking what we believe. Yes. I said we ought to be yes. speaking what we believe. Amen. 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 Somebody said, "Well, preacher, I just call it like I see it." Well, you're not, going to, you're not going to get anywhere if you just call it like you see it. You need to start calling it like you want it. Amen. 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 You need to start calling the unseen things. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, amen. Hello. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Amen. 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 Our faith must be released through our words. Yes. Amen. amen. And then principle number five is this. Our faith is released by our actions. Again, let's look at the woman with the issue of blood. Let's go back, throw a, uh, Mark 5, 27 and 28 back there. Let's go 27 again. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. What is that? That's action, isn't it? Yeah. For she said... If I touch his clothes, I shall be made well. See, here's where your saying will help you. Her, her saying motivated her to action. Right. She's yeah. sitting at home with this, with this dread disease that she's suffered with for 12 years. She's been getting worse and no better. All of a sudden, she has hope come to her. She hears about Jesus. She hears what Jesus is doing. And faith comes into her heart. And a thought comes into her mind. You know, it'll work for you, don't you? It'll work for you. Yeah. And so she begins to say, if I touch his clothes, I shall be made well. If I touch his clothes, I shall be made well. And all of a sudden she says, what am I doing at home here? Mm -hmm. What am I doing staying here at home? I'm going to go to where he's at. Yeah, amen. Amen. I'm going to get to Jesus. Amen. And she did. And it wasn't easy for her to do. Because she, she had that issue of blood. She, legally, she wasn't supposed to be out in public. Because of that. She was unclean. Right. And she wasn't, according to Jewish law, she wasn't supposed to even be out in public. Right. But she risked that. And secondly, there was a big crowd around Jesus. 
And, and in her condition, she had to be weakened physically. And it had to be hard for her to, it, it, it probably seemed impossible even to get to Jesus because of the huge crowd. That, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm quick to give up. If, if the drive through is wrapped around, you know, the building at Chick-fil-A, I'm just like, let's go eat at Wendy's. <laughs> yeah. Now, if, I, if I'm really having my tummy set and my taste buds set on Chick-fil-A, I'll wait. But most of the time, I'm like, I'm giving this up. Is anybody, anybody like me what I'm talking about? Amen. <laughs> Well, this well, it's like that. It was like it was like you going to Chick Fil A and seeing the and seeing the double the double line. Yeah, the double you know, line. the double line is deceptive. Yeah. It makes it look like you know, if it wasn't a double line, it'd be twice as. It'd be right around the building three times. It'd be down to Hobby Lobby and all the way out to Highway Twenty yeah. uh, you know, whatever, whichever Chick Fil A you go to. But that's the one here in town. But uh, it would it, it would it seemed impossible for her to get through this crowd. Uh, but she said, you know, I'm going to, if I touch his clothes, I'll be made well. And she got determined. Yeah. That's another thing. That if, if you're going to have faith to be healed, you're going to have to be determined yes, about it. Yes, you, can't, you can't allow yourself to be, uh, to be set back That's by setbacks. Right. Amen? Right. Right. You can't allow yourself to be discouraged right. by setbacks. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? She pressed through that crowd. She was weak, but she pressed through the crowd, and she got a hold of it. Mm -hmm. She got a hold of it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. She came and she touched. She acted on her faith. She believed that when she touched Jesus, she would be made well. That was her. Or Roberts called this a point of contact. Yeah. When he began his healing ministry, he called it a point of contact. He told, I know Brother Copeland has shared this because Brother Copeland trained under Or Roberts. And, uh, and, he, and he, I know Brother Copeland said that Or Roberts told him, never, uh, never lay hands on someone until you're ready to yes. release your faith. Yeah. Never lay hands on someone until you're ready to release your faith because that's your point of contact. Amen. Well, on the other side of that, be ready to release your faith when hands are laid on you. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 What is? What is your point of contact? For her, it was touching the hem of Jesus' garment. If I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. If I touch his clothes, I shall be be made well. What's your point of contact? Where are you going to release your faith mm -hmm. to say, I release my faith. Mm -hmm. It's done. I've acted. Amen. I receive my healing. Where's where's where that point of contact for you? That's what you have to determine. That's what you have to decide. Where you a lot of times it's, it's just nebulous with folks and it's it's never definite and defined. And well, are you believing? Well, I think so, or well, maybe so. No, it should be, yes, I released my faith. This was my point of contact. Yes. This was the moment. Whether it's a physical touch or whether it's the moment when you said amen yes. at the end of your prayer. Right. At that moment, release your faith. Yes. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. All right. Again, back on the back on the man at Lister, the layman, the Bible says this man, verse 9 of Acts 14, this man heard Paul speaking, Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. Stop right there. Stop right there. He's, Paul is preaching. This man's hearing. This man has, has faith to be healed. Not going to get it, has it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He has faith to be healed. But, but what's, his, what, what's his, his condition? He's still sitting there crippled, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's got faith in his heart to be healed, and yet he's still sitting there crippled. Yes. It's not that he doesn't have faith. It's just that he hasn't done anything with his faith yet. Yeah, that's good. That faith had to be released. Yep. It had to be released. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's good. So Paul wanted to help him release his faith. When Paul perceived yeah. by the Spirit yeah. that he had faith to be healed, he looked at him and he said, Stand up! Stand up. On your feet. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. Praise God. Good. And Reed, come and, and Reed, you stand up and come back <laughs> up. <laughs> Hallelujah. He did this to help the man release his faith. Yeah. And what happened? Yes. Before thinking about it, before stopping to reason himself out of it, the man's sitting there crippled, and Paul says, stand up on your feet. And he goes, okay. Up, yeah. And all of a sudden, he's up. Yeah. And the Bible says he leaped, mm. and he walked. Amen. Hallelujah. He acted. Yeah. 
He released his faith by action. Point, principle number six, the last one is this. Don't reason yourself out of faith. Amen. Don't reason yourself out of faith. <coughs> Thank God that that man that day didn't say, but I can't stand up. Right. But I'm crippled. But I've been this way all my life. Mm. I would like to, but I can't. He didn't, he didn't reason himself out. Paul said, stand up, so he stood up. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He instantly obeyed, and that action released his faith Amen. and brought healing to his body. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The woman with the issue of blood, let's go back on, on her for a minute. In Mark 5, 28, for she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Amen. And so she did it. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Let me point something out. When she, when she began to say, if I touch his clothes, I shall be made well, yes. she did not feel in her body right. that she was well. No. When she came and touched Jesus' garment, Jesus' clothes, she did not feel in her body that she was well. She was not governed by her feelings. She was governed, what she said was not governed by her feelings. What she said was governed by her faith. Her actions were not governed by her feelings. Her actions were governed by her faith. But after she said, and after she acted, then she fell. Amen. The feeling will come. Yes. But it will come after. Yes. Amen. You and me speak in faith. Yes. And act in faith. Yeah. Amen. 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 A lot of times we're waiting for the feeling to come first before we speak or before we act. That's getting the cart before the horse. Nothing will nothing will happen that way. Amen. Yeah, right. Immediately she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Verse 30. And Jesus, immediately, how many have figured out that immediately is one of Mark's favorite words? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was the first word that he learned when he was a baby. The first word he spoke after Dada was immediately. <laughs> the Apostle Mark. You read through the book of Mark sometime and, and just note how many times immediately. I think the King James uses straightway. Uh, but uh, he uses that word a lot. So, And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him. Turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? His disciples said, you see the multitude throng of you. You say, you in other words, Jesus, well, duh. There's been about a thousand people that have touched you in the last 15 minutes. But she, when she touched Jesus in faith, she drew the healing power out of him yes. and into her body. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Many people were touching him that day in the crowd, yeah. but she touched him a different way. Yes. Yes. Amen. She touched him with faith. Amen. And there is a difference. Oh, yes. There's a difference between praying and saying, well, I hope, I hope this works or I hope something happens. There's a difference in, in coming into a, a ministry line and saying, well, I'm just going to go up there and have them lay hands on me and see if something happens. There's a difference in that and saying, I shall be made well. Amen. When hands are laid on me, the healing power will go into me, yes. and I shall be made well. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 She touched him with faith. Amen. Verse 32, and he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Amen. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Amen. The New American Standard Bible says, Be cured. Cured. Cured, cured of your disease. Be cured Amen. of your... This, this was not some temporary relief that she got. No, no. This was a condition she had suffered with for 12 years, and now it is gone, and she Ooh. is cured. Yes. Amen. Cured. Cured. 
secure. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Amplified Bible says, Go in peace and be continually healed and freed from your distressing bodily disease. Hallelujah. That's what faith will do. That's what faith will do. And he said, daughter, your faith has made you. He didn't say, daughter, my power has made you. Well, was it, was it his power? Certainly it yes, was. Of course. But his power was available for anybody and everybody. That's it. That's it. But it only became, it, it was only, it, it only was effective for those who accessed it. So really it's our faith that makes the difference. The power is available. Yes. The power is always turned on. Yes, it is. The variable is not the power of God. Right. No. The variable is, will we believe it? Right. And will we and will we release our faith? Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Your faith can make you well. Amen. You have faith. You have faith to be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Stand up on your feet. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for our online family, and I want to pray for you as well. Here. But for our own online family, I want to ask you this. You're here, and you've maybe, you're tuned in and, and, and watching us, and maybe you've never asked Jesus in your heart. That's the greatest miracle Amen. that you can have is the new birth, being born again. Faith works the same. The principles of faith are the same in every area. The Bible says if you confess or if you say with your mouth, Jesus is my Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now to receive Jesus. And we'll do it right here. Let's just all bow our heads in prayer here in the congregation, in person here at City on the Hill. And those of you that are joining us online, just bow your head and close your eyes right now. And I want to ask you, if you're watching us online or if you're here in the building, please every head bowed and every eye closed for just a moment, just out of respect for the presence of God and the Holy Spirit. You're here and you say, Pastor, I've never asked Jesus into my heart, but I want to make him Lord of my life. Would you raise your hand? Pastor, pray for me. I want to invite Jesus into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. You know, nobody can do this for you. Uh, this is something very personal between you and God. Only you only you can ask the Lord into your heart. I can't do it for you. If, if I could, I would because I want to see everybody be, uh, come to Christ and be saved. But I can't do it for you. I can only tell you how. I can only lead you. And those of you that are watching this online, I can lead you and I'm going to right here. All right? Uh, those of you online, I want to pray with you. And if you're here in City on the Hill, if you'd join us in this prayer, just pray it after me. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, Father I, come I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe, I believe that Jesus died for me. That Jesus died for me. And I confess. And I confess. I say. I say that Jesus, that Jesus is my Lord. Is my Lord. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart, Jesus. Wash away my sin. Wash away my sin. By your blood. By your blood. That you shed for me. That you shed for me. On the cross. On the cross. I put my faith in you. I put my faith in you. And I thank you. I thank you for coming into my heart. For coming into my heart. And for saving me. And for saving me. I am your child. I am your child. I belong to you. I belong to you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Now.